Hello and thanks for joining me. Well, today I'm going to build a new cutoff sled for this table saw. This one's doubled as a workbench and it's real nasty, plus it's got a little bit of wear. Uh, it's about 18 years old, so it's about time to replace it anyway. Uh, it's done really well. Uh, before we get started though, let's discuss some of the uh, uh, different things that need to be uh, added to the table saw to make this sled work a little better and a little better about table saw safety. So let's get started. Okay, this sled we're building is uh, capable of cutting a 4x8 sheet of plywood in half. And to do that, you have to pull the sled quite a ways back. So you've got to have something to support the sled. These rails here are real, really pretty simple. It looks like about a two and a half inch piece of oak. I've got a couple of scraps uh, across them. Uh, fit the rail on my saw and then uh, I glued a broomstick in the other end uh, but you may have to come up with your own design uh, some saws have a round rail uh, but you got to come up with something okay on the other side of the saw I've got a 4 by 6 table here yeah, obviously well used uh, I cut a couple of slots and they're about an inch wide. The table saw slots are, are a quarter inch wide, but it's just a clearance slot for the sled. So when it comes across, it's free to move. Uh, this is four by six, highly recommended, at least four by four. Got to have something to catch that saw or sled. You could have a couple of rollers. Uh, I used to have a saw that I did that with, but this is really a lot better. Okay, I've seen some sled designs where they make a raised section in here and that's probably to increase the uh, amount of wood that's left right here above the saw cut uh, and it probably does increase the strength but my method, the way I like to do it, is leave it the full height all the way across. If you need to make it a little taller for extra strength here, so be it. But that, that allows you to have a stop. So, and you could put a ruler in there, embed a ruler in the fence, but I usually just measure from the blade to the stop. But that allows you to make repeat cuts. If I needed uh, a bunch of pieces that length right there. works really well for that. Here's something else you can do. What if I want to cut a taper on that and I want it, want it to be the same uh, on, on, e on several pieces. If I got a line on here I want to cut it at that angle, just lay a straight edge against the blade, line it up with that line. Okay I've got that sitting where I want to cut it. Take a nail gun, you've set that angle now. Now I can lay that piece in there like that, set that angle, anyway there's a lot of possibilities. use short nails. Uh, safety. I've got the guard off my saw. Uh, that's about the only way the cutoff sled can work. I, I feel okay running the saw without a guard on it. The top guards are extremely, uh, well they're not user friendly. But I've got a splitter in here, a little piece of metal sticking up, that helps keep wood against the fence. It's not really like the name implies for splitting. It helps keep wood away from, from moving away from the fence when you're ripping. And 
when wood moves away from the fence, that's when you get a kickback. So that's basically an anti-kickback device. If you're buying a new saw, get one with a riving knife. A riving knife goes up and down with, it looks like this, except it's curved to the contour of the blade. And when you move the blade up and down, the riving knife goes with it. That is absolutely the best safety feature on any new saw, hands down. Uh, a lot of saws are still sold without a riving knife. Absolutely do not buy one without a riving knife. Uh, I wish this one had it. It does not. Anyway, let's get on with building this sled. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is make the back fence. Because it's got to be glued and I want to let the glue dry a little while. It's going to be like an L shape like that. Well, what I'm going to do is laminate those together like that for strength and then plane down this surface a little bit and then cut a dado in this to attach this to. But the first thing we got to do is make sure this is absolutely straight right here. So we're going to joint that. This is not critical. I was going for one inch by 3 sixteenths deep. Okay, what I'm after here, I want to plane that down so that it sits up against here and it's flush with the edge of this right here. Now, I'm not going to go quite that far. I'm going to plane about half of this down so it's about 3 eighths of an inch. And then after I assemble it and glue it, I'll joint the surface. Okay, I've made these uh, four and a quarter wide. I think all total it, needed, it needs to be uh, about four inches. So I made it a little bit oversized. Now we're going to trim this down after the glue dries, so uh -huh. exact alignment is not so important. Okay, I'm also going to uh, glue the back fence together so we get, get all this glue drying. It's two three quarter inch pieces of plywood, nothing very critical. They're four and a quarter inches wide. Okay, I just roughly trimmed the ends, then I jointed one edge and then trimmed it to width, and I, I made it uh, four inches tall. Now I'm going to trim the ends flush. Okay, now I'm going to glue this, just like that. Except first, I'm going to drill two holes here. One foot in from each end. It's not real critical, just centered on this flange here. 
and it'll it'll be clear a little bit later why I'm doing that. This needs to be uh, clamped in both directions. In other words, I want it tied up against the edge of that dado. Okay, when you're gluing this, make sure you stay square this way. I had, it, had the clamps on the other side and it was pulling the wood like that. Uh, just double check that you're fairly square there. Okay, I've got the fence set at 24 inches. Now I've got a piece of half inch Luon plywood here. Pretty good piece of plywood, nice and flat, which is what you need. And I'm going to rip, rip that in half uh, lengthwise. And this is four by five feet. That's going to be the size of our sled. Okay, for this next step, I want to remove the splitter on my saw. If you don't have a splitter, don't worry about it. And then, I want to drop the blade all the way. What we need to do right here is move this plywood so it's just a little past the blade. In other words, against the, if the blade was up, it'd be against the blade uh, and then drop the blade and go maybe about 3 16 further. And then, mark where the miter slots are, like that. And you need to do the same thing to this one. Except on this one, you need to do it on this end. This, this is kind of confusing, but it'll be clear later. Okay, this next step is fairly critical. I've got a three-quarter inch router bit. And I'm going to, I've got it set at one eighth of an inch deep. And I want to position it exactly where I marked that miter slot. Okay, when I say this is critical, it's critical that the slot cut in this piece of wood is straight. Uh, it'll hold our runner for the uh, It'll run in the miter slots. Uh, you can do this on a table saw with a dado stack. It'll work perfect. I just happen to have a large router table that works, works well for this. Yeah, I've got the wood laying here lined up lined up the slot on the wood with the miter slot and I want to measure that total depth and then allow myself about an eighth inch clearance in the bottom of the slot. So that'll be about three-eighths of an inch, maybe just a hair more. Okay, I've got the splitter back in there and I've got my uh, fence set at three-eighths of an inch. We're going to cut some runners now. I've planed this wood down. I actually planed it down a few years ago when I made a, another cutoff box. It, it's a little bit warped, but that won't hurt. But it fits in the miter slot. You want a good fit, but you want a, a little bit of play in there, like maybe 15, 20 thousandths. 10 anyway. But it's got to be able to slip in there. Now a little bit of a warp won't hurt because that slot in the bottom of our sled will straighten that out. Uh, but this is really close to three-quarter inch. The miter slots in my table saw are exactly three-quarter inch. And 
knocking the edge off of there. I don't want any debris down in this miter slot. I want that miter uh, piece of wood to sit in there, sit in there flush where the glue gets. You really don't want, you want to put enough glue in here to to hold, but you don't, you really don't want squeeze out. Sounds like the weather is going to get rough out there. That's a perfect fit. Okay, back to the fence. Okay, we're going to try jointing the face of this fence we made. If, if, you're, if you need to fine tune your jointer, now's the time to do it. Remember I left that three-eighths of an inch thick, or maybe just a hair more. Basically what I did is plane this surface down to match this, plus plane that a little bit. So that's a good fence now, good straight fence, very straight. had a very slight bow this way too, which may or may not matter, but I'd rather have it straight. Right here I've got a chamfering bit, 45 degree angle. I'm going to knock the corner off of this. What that does, it'll stop uh, dust from wedging in there and it'll allow stock to sit up flush through the fence when you're cutting it. I've never done this before, but I've seen other people do it, and I think it's a good idea. It's a very small camper, about a 32nd of an inch. But that'll stop dirt from interfering with stock sitting up against your fence. Okay, things are starting to take shape here. The next step is to lay this in the miter groove and trim the edge off of that plywood. Okay, we got both halves of our sled sitting in the slots there. They're a little tight. I'll tell you what happens. That glue absorbs into the runners and swells the wood. And after that dries, if, if it's still tight, we'll have to sand them a little bit. But it's better to have them a little snug than too loose. This right here, I usually leave about an eighth inch between the edge of that and the 
back right there. Now we're not squaring the sled now. We're just mounting this fence approximately where it needs to be. Clamp it like that. So the fence is hanging off the edge of my saw a little bit right there. And you drill through here. I've got a couple of inch and a half carriage bolts here. What we're going to do, take this fence back off. We're going to put those through from the bottom. But we're also going to counterbore that with a 11 16 bit. Just deep enough so that, that head is flush. There we go. Do the same to the other side. Okay, I've got a uh, drywall square laying on there and I want to square this slide up so I can move it like that. More than likely when we're square here the T-square will be square. Now don't trust these squares. In other words, we're going to get in the ballpark with this square. Turn it over like this and check it like that. We are very close. That square is fairly accurate. Now we tighten these bolts down. And it's wood, so you don't want to be gorilla tight, but you want them pretty snug because you don't want this fence to move. Okay, I've seen a lot of different procedures for doing this and uh, to be honest with you, I think a lot of them are kind of crazy. But the way I do it is I'm going to trim this edge off and I'm square to the fence on this side. Then I'm going to flip it over like this. Trim it again and measure the width of the piece I trim off. If it's different end to end, it'll tell me which way my fence has to go. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, this is a good example. And there's a reason why this happened. Because my sled moved. Not good. Anyway, if my sled hadn't moved and I was off like this, I would measure half inch on this end and inch and an eighth on that end, that's five eighths, that's five sixteenths of an inch out of square in this length. But seeing as how my cutoff sled moved, I'm going to have to redo that. Okay, new approach. 
the carriage bolts do not hold. My square is not quite square, but if I get the same taper the other direction when I flip it, I know the slide will be square. I think that's good right there. Okay, this new approach. I can't leave these clamps on there and make test cuts because the clamp gets in the way of the table saw bed. So it's square right now. And I'm going to put about five or six clamps on it. Probably four clamps. And then put some screws in from the bottom. Okay, I just made this cut. So this cut is parallel to that slot. And after I move it back across, and I don't know if you can see this or not, I'm touching the blade right there, and I got about a 64th of an inch, maybe a probably a 32nd of an inch there. So I need to go, this half of the sled needs to go up just a hair. And I'll be able to see it right there. I've got all the screws loose. Okay, that's about half the distance. I'll clamp that and screw it down and we'll try it again. Okay, I got the uh, digital calipers off. 435. four forty three, ten thousandths off. <coughs> That's pretty darn close. I can't see it on my tape measure. Okay, the next step is to attach this back fence. I want to come in about a half an inch from this edge and just attach it right there. Now ideally, this needs to be glued. It doesn't matter if this is square. This needs to be roughly square. Okay, that holds that spacing. Now I can lift it like that. Now, I can just pull it off the end of my outfeed table and clamp it and screw it. Okay, I've got the sled upside down, 
and I'm going to further secure this front fence. It's uh, it's not glued, and I'm not going to glue it, but I am going to screw it down really good. That lines up with the plywood in the fence on the other side. It's a little tight. I may just try waxing it. Well, check this out. Smooth as so. I like it. Now I'll just give it a coat of uh, polyurethane and we'll call it call it done. I like it. Yeah, I'm very pleased with the way this came out. It's a little bit lighter weight than my other sled, which makes it easier to get on and off the saw. Uh, that's a consideration when you're building these. You don't want them too heavy. Uh, the only thing I would do different, I would put four carriage bolts in there. Just evenly space it along the back edge there. That would eliminate the problem I had with the sled skewing when I was trying to square it up. Uh, I'll put, uh, I'll, I'll drop some plans on this and, and put a link down below the video if you want to check them out. Uh, of course, you can make variations on it, uh, do it however you want. Uh, a lot of possibilities. Anyway, thanks for joining me and uh, be sure and subscribe.